So I'm here to report on a positive story of energy, energy transition. A lot of times in this work, we spend a lot of time looking into the future to figure out what happened. So sometimes it's actually useful to look back in the past and actually figure out what did happen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. So I spend my time studying uh, the history of energy transitions with a focus on energy transition in Alberta and how Alberta transitioned away from fossil fuels in the early 21st century. And it's important to look at how these transitions happen because we've transitioned many times in our society from burning uh, wood and dung to burning coal to burning oil, but we've never really done that deliberately with a plan and now the figure can we actually manage to do that. But it's tough given where we started. Uh, George Bush said we're addicted to oil back in the early part of the uh, 20th century. And that's true. When you think about it, what is addiction? Addiction is having a craving, seeking relief. But one of the key pieces is seeing harmful consequences and still not being able to stop the behavior of what you're doing. And in the 21st century, one of our biggest addictions was to oil. And then the, our addiction to oil had a lot of negative consequences for our environment, for our health, for our economy, for our communities, our democracy, our relationship with our neighbors. The fact that we were focused on a specific uh, commodity made it very difficult to plan. Uh, we had environmental consequences, degradation, uh, bad relations with indigenous communities and First Nations, a lot of those kind of things. But addiction was hard to crack because in addition to all of that, we got benefits. We got money, money to pay for schools and hospitals and roads. We'd also invested a huge amount in this infrastructure. We had gas pipelines and transmission lines and power stations and coal, uh, uh, tar sands, all these different kind of things we'd spent a huge amount of infrastructure investment on. So we wanted to make changes around the edges, very much like alcoholics try to make changes around the edges when they want to quit drinking. These are a list of all things you can do except not stop drinking if you want to manage your alcohol problem. And we do the, often the very similar thing when we look at energy, trying to sort of not look at the root causes but change different sort of surface levels of behavior. So when we look at that, how that applies to energy, we do the same kind of thing. We want to still drive our cars, but we buy electric vehicles. We still want to have massive houses, but we put solar panels on the top. We still want to consume, but we buy green products. We want to fly around the world, but we buy carbon offsets. Anything but actually looking at what are the sort of root drivers and the systems that we actually have in place that may be getting in the way of having a sustainable society. So in the early part of the 21st century, we started to see a whole bunch of crises happening in Alberta. Floods, forest fires, new climate plans, uh, pipelines being blocked, uh, a new uh, carbon price coming in uh, nationally, international agreements looking at carbon, uh, indigenous conflicts in the US and Canada, and of course the first uh, Trump presidency as well. <laughs> so now we actually come to this. And so, we, and so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. JK Rowling said that. So now, could Alberta say the same? Alberta's at a jumping off place. Can it actually make a different transition and, and go in a different direction? That was really the question. But it wasn't a simple question. Because in Alberta, there was still kind of two camps. One that really saw this crisis as a, as a sign that we need to make a change, we need to go in a different direction. But another big part of the population saw this as just another downturn. The oil price will come back up and we can go back to pumping, go back to the way that business as usual. So in the short term, Alberta tried to put in some transitional places, not transformational, but a way to mitigate some of the harms. But there was a problem with this. One of the plans was to make Alberta carbon neutral. So shut down the, the coal plants, but still export coal. Decarbonize oil sands production, but still export oil. That's great, and, and Alberta can become 100% greenhouse gas free, but the ethical and moral implications of don't get high on your own supply are a bit problematic, especially considering the atmosphere doesn't care where the emissions come from. So Albertans then finally came together to create a new vision for the future of, uh, of Alberta, an energy system that was democratized, decolonized, and one that led to a new economic base, one that was based on innovation and knowledge economy, not based on fossil fuels. So that didn't happen simply and easily. There were a lot of different sort of things that led to that. And one of the processes that I'm particularly studying or have studied is the Energy Futures Lab. This brought together people from across the energy system in Alberta trying to break through this polarized debate and help create a shared vision of what that future could look like. And my own research has been focused on the design, evolution, and impact of processes like this, specifically the Energy Futures Lab. But when you talk about impact of these processes, it's really difficult to kind of measure what that actually looks like. The Public Scholars Initiative was crucial in bringing together people that are trying to evaluate how impactful these processes are from government, from private sector, uh, from NGOs, and we actually worked together to come up with a common framework that led to an international conference on evaluating these processes and also a global community of practice of pr practitioners that are looking at trying to measure how transition processes look. So back to this transition. So yes, I love my little happy fish here. So, so how did that actually happen? We talked about uh, democratizing, and decolonizing, and moving to a new economic base. But what does that actually mean? So let, let's start with looking at the economic base. And if we can look back at sort of where we were in 2015. 
So as we see here, 18% of the economy in uh, Alberta came from oil and gas, and another 12% from construction. And a lot of the construction uh, was actually related to oil and gas, both building that infrastructure and building housing for the workers that were flooding into the province to work. But what the, uh, Alberta was actually able to do was reframe that in a couple of different ways. First of all, shift the framing from oil and gas production to energy services delivery. Because no one actually wants oil and gas. They want heat and light and to be able to get to work, to be able to cook their food. They want the services that energy provides. Also prov uh, reframing carbon from waste to an asset. Look at turning carbon into building materials and other things other than just taking it out of the ground and burning it. Democratizing energy. This is really a lot about opening up the energy system to different players, both in production as well as policy decisions. Managing, uh, managing an infrastructure transition from a system that was built on big central power plants that burn things, that push electrons down wires to, to uh, consumers, to radically decentralize power production and investing in alternative consumption. And then finally, looking at decolonizing the energy system, and this is the uh, Lubicon uh, uh, Cree First Nation in northern, BC, in northern Alberta, really ensuring indigenous leadership in this energy transition, not just in including indigenous peoples as a stakeholder, but having them lead that, that process, including recognizing First Nations title claims to land and also learning from indigenous peoples' relationship with the land. So where are we now? Well, it's been a bumpy ride, and there were many times it looked like Alberta could backslide into that addiction to oil, but we've stayed the course, we're solid in our recovery, and rock bottom looks a long way away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'll just close with my thank yous to uh, MyTax Canada, Natural Step Canada, UBC Public Scholars Initiative, IRES, and Boca de Lupo Theatre. Thank you very much.